we really needed to make a plan to get this back to safety. Some farmers even drive over them when they see them on, on roads. Um, so there's a lot of threats to these dogs, uh, human threats. My ultimate goal is to find a way that everybody can peacefully coexist up here in the Waterberg, all of the wild dogs and all of the landowners too. So the goal is to fit all 10 adults with different variations of tracking collars. Um, placing a tracking collar on a Waterberg wild dog is often said to actually save that dog's life. One, because it allows us to monitor these dogs' locations, um, but also it lets people know that somebody is out here watching these free roaming dogs. The Lopalala offered to take the pack here in our Predator Boma to just uh, put the pressure off the dogs for a little while and also give them an opportunity to den in a safe environment. It was a big surprise for those that moved the dogs and were, re were relocating the dogs that the alpha female successfully had a litter of pups when they were placed in this boma. So Lapalala Wilderness has been able to watch these dogs grow up. Um, they've gone from very, very tiny little brand new puppies all the way up to their running around and they're eating meat now and they're involved in the feeding of the adults. So the plan today is to dart two individuals in the pack to place a collar on them. And while we are busy, we will also take the opportunity to uh, take DNA samples from the dogs and also to give them a rabies vaccination. We've got a, a pack where multiple dogs need to be darted, so I'm just gonna sit down with a carcass so that the dogs show interest and come closer. And then I'm gonna sit with my dart gun and take my time to wait until a dog is, is in the right position and at a close enough distance to dart. So my dart gun is a cartridge-based dart gun. So I use 0.22 blanks that I put into the magazine that will cause the pressure for the dart to get released from the dart gun. I've got it on safe now. Ideally you want a perfect dart placement and for that you prefer to choose the rump on the back with a nice muscle area. Right, um, that one is over there. Second one there. Yeah, the second one on the back, that young male, yeah, we can do that. Okay, great. They're gonna just get it uh, closer to us so that we can keep an eye on him. He's down and he's just just out of sight. It's just to, to protect the eyes and just to uh, to cut out any unnecessary sort of stimulus to the animal. Okay, we'll wait with giving the carcass to the animals just until that animal is down, because uh, we we're not sure now yet if uh, all the drugs went into the. Uh, dog, so it might be that he's not fully going down, and in that case, we don't want the carcass with the group. So we're gonna just keep our eyes on that animal until it's down. Then we'll give the carcass to the rest. Today is a bit of a chilly day, and the drugs that I use they do affect the thermal regulation also in the dogs. So we want to work as quickly as possible so that we can um, reverse them also as quickly as possible again, so that the thermal regulation inside the body can start working again properly. 
This one is breathing is nicely. Have you seen the that uh, second dog? Yeah, it's it's down. It's it down. Ears still moving. Uh, it's absolutely amazing to see them up close. You usually just see little snippets of them on trail cams or people take blurry photos as they're running by, so to be able to see the dog up close is absolutely incredible. Johannes, uh, yeah, you wait with the dog treatment. Okay, let's just replace it all as well. See that? Initially, because it's a new sensation and a bit of extra weight, you know, the animal will definitely be aware of it. But after a day or two, there's there's nothing that you can visually pick up from the animals that, um, you know, that they're behaving anyway or responding anyway to the to the collars. Basically, it's got a it's got a unit in it that that sends out a, a radio signal Mike, and with an uh, with a, a, a radio receiver and an antenna, you can pick up that signal and uh, and then track the animals. It's exciting, you know, a lot of people see conservation work going on kind of in the, in the background and everything and this is, this is the chance to get the real and up-close view of, of the on-the-grounds conservation work. When we put out numbers for how many wild dogs are left in South Africa, there are only about 450 adults in South Africa and we've got two right here, so it's, it's amazing. So as you can feel, the extremities are all nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Obviously with this kind of weather, we mm -hmm. make we want to avoid the animals being under temperature. Yeah, so we are collecting DNA samples for, from all the wild dogs that we're darting in this week. Um, we take both hair samples, the f hair follicles that contain DNA material and blood as a backup. So we've got two, two options. 94. So uh, Mike is giving a rabies vaccination to the dogs in the muscle. Um, yeah, they already received one rabies vaccination when they came in, and we're now uh, giving them a second uh, booster dosage. Uh, they're responding really well. These two dogs on the on the drugs, they're not too deep and not too light. So the the combination of drugs that I gave to them is working really well. Um, so we'll, we, we are finishing off now and then we will um, wake the animals up. So we spend a lot of time monitoring the dogs. You really get to know the individuals. You really get to, uh, yeah, you really get to start to care for the animals. So for us it's, it's exciting to release them uh, next week because we um, we, the dogs deserve to be to have their freedom, but on the other hand, we're also a bit wary, of course, because the more you know an individual an individual dog, the more it hurts you when you hear that something happens with them outside of, uh, you know, outside. Can everybody move? Thank you, Mike. Stay out of the way. Everybody out of the way. Yeah, the way they move now is normal. Yeah, it's normal, yeah. He's trying to get away, that's all he's Yeah. Okay, everybody just give this dog some space. Yeah, it's also fine. It's the best sight watching them rejoin their pack. All of the difficult work that goes into tracking these dogs, finding these dogs, responding to reported sightings and responding to sport. It all makes it worth it when you get to collar them like this and you know that they're gonna be they're gonna be safe. The next step is going to be to put the other four collars on these dogs, um, which we will be working on over the next few days. And then eventually these dogs are going to be released onto Lapalala Wilderness, where hopefully they will decide to make this their, their permanent home. Today was a massive success for our conservation efforts. We were able to successfully place two tracking collars on these dogs. That's two more down, um, four more dogs to collar before this pack is fully collared. So yeah, massive success today.